he kind of, he was like, well, when he was younger. Good morning. How are you? We were just having a very interesting conversation about pigeons for Ghibli, uh, which can mean only one thing. If only conversations are happening, it can only mean that Helen McCook is in the house, uh, which is fabulous. And uh, hang on, my video is now live. Why is it not? There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Helen was just saying your, your grandfather had was it emphysema. He had emphysema, yeah. And it was no a Scotsman, yeah. proud Scotsman, and it's known as the... Yeah, the doctor told him, when they told him what it was, diagnosed it, they said, well, Mr. Stewart, you've got the Englishman's disease, and he was really offended. He didn't even know what it was at that point. He was yes. just so offended. Just offended. <laughs> that, and no Englishman. That he might have caught something in England, or he, he was just like, I don't know what, you know, really offended by that <laughs> title. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> I remember that really clearly. I was just like, oh. But actually caused by pigeons. Well, and, and a lot of smoking. Oh, well, that yeah. would He was do in the too. Navy from a very young age and With his family were fishermen, so he smoked from quite a young age. Yeah, you so. that's the thing, isn't it? It just doesn't, just doesn't work for you. Um, anyway, good morning. Uh, random <laughs> chat this morning. Uh, I can't promise it'll get any better. I think we've set the standard. Pigeons and navies. When you hit your level, <laughs> keep going. Accept it. Accept it and just keep going on. It's all good. How are you all this morning? Are you well? I'm sort of to one side because um, this bit of loveliness is here. Um, Helen's done a cracking job. So when we spoke to Helen last time, we said, what would we like to do? And we decided a, a little collection of four seasons that you can hang as a group or make up into a cushion or do whatever you fancy with it. Just have it displayed on the wall um, as a really beautiful thing. So Helen went away um, and in the throes of homeschooling, COVID, you know, those sorts of things that, you know, uh, Wonder Woman here has dealt with. Um, this is what she has uh, come up with. Blooming special, isn't it? <laughs> Loving that. What sort of stitching is this? So this is canvas stitching, but it's only one stitch on there. So it's all changes of colour. So people who like counted work, cross stitch, that kind of thing will love this. Anyone who's a complete beginner or anyone who just wants something that can, they can engage with and just delve into in a mindful kind of slow stitching way, it's great. This is the one. Yeah. This is the one, which is yeah, fabulous. Yeah, perfect for January. Well, it kind of is, isn't it? And it's got those beautiful colours that make us uh, feel a little bit happier. Mm. Am I all right to bring this yeah, yeah. To, as a little... Uh, so that's the summer one. Yep. And then this one is going to be the autumn one. Ooh. There's little acorns at the top yet to be stitched. They're going in there, aren't they? Mm. Just got, I love these stripes down the side. Kind of brings a bit of a modern feel to that, I thought. Yeah, you know, funnily enough, this is actually, they used to have this in the kind of Victorian period, but it does feel really modern and graphic. And I know that you'd sent me, we'd kind of, the initial inspiration was um, the Sanderson pictures that you'd sent. Well, let me show you those, because <coughs> we've got those on the show today. It's not going to stay, is it? It might. It might. It em might. Embrace, embrace the excitement. Yay! Here we go. <laughs> And this was, yeah, this was it. So we had these. You have no idea how hard it has been not to cut this and <laughs> make multiple things with it. Um, Gemma just said, can we not just split it 50-50 and just make <laughs> the most amazing pyjamas out of it? It is gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. So that was the inspiration. I really see how you've taken the shape from here and Definitely. changed it, made it your own, but really gone with those beautiful colours I love this. This is available by the half metre cut to order. So if you do want to make your pyjamas out of it, mm. I mean, they'd be a bit special, wouldn't they? Well, I mean, that would be absolutely splendid. You'd be the cat's pyjamas and the cat's whiskers in those. You would be the cat's pyjamas and the cat's whiskers. I mean, the cat would be jealous. <laughs> we'll talk about magic in a minute, your cat. Yeah, indeed. And then this is another... I've got three Sandersons for you. Let me show you the one that's in the same colour way. <sighs> So, I mean, really rather beautiful, let's be honest. And again, you can get that by the half metre, uh, cut to order on today's show. And then this is it in a slightly different colour. You see, this would be nice with the autumnal one, wouldn't it? See, those two really remind me of um, kind mm. of, there's fabrics that used to print kind of around Jaipur, around 1860. 
and they, they just remind me of those. And, and Sanderson actually was founded in 1960, so it feels about right. About, yeah, yeah. you see, you are that encyclopedic, knowledgeable person on these things. I just look at them and go, the colours are beautiful, the, <laughs> the design is lush, I heart them very much. And that's where I come from. But I'm 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 up for a bit of Jaipur and yeah, all sorts of absolutely. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Get a bit of Jaipur and a bit of spice and flavour in your house. Yeah, lovely. I, I this is where I get really torn. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, we're a shop. We're uh -huh. here to sell stuff. <laughs> you want to keep everything. <laughs> yeah. I used to work for an auction house, and people used to say to me. Oh, it's so great that you're seeing all these things. It's like, yes, it is, but I also want to buy everything. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, it's, it's really dangerous, <laughs> really dangerous. But that bottom one, yeah. these two here, I think probably... I just, they're really yummy, aren't they? Oh, they're just, just divine. Mm. So, you know, if, if Gemma's forgotten to load those, wouldn't that be a shame? I think you had a stripe as well, didn't you? You had a stripe fabric in Flanston. Did you? Yes, I have. Did you want the stripe on the... We can add yeah, that in. Yeah, because it would, it would fit in with the stripe motif. Because what you could do is... I'll add that in later, because it was it's sort of in those brownie yeah. tones. Well, that's why I brought the stripe in, um, I and um, I just thought it'd be a good addition. So, kind yes. of, you're kind of juxtaposing the kind of um I tell you flowing. what it is, yep. it's a cave... F I nearly added it, and then went, have I got too much? Yeah. Is it going to be confusing? But I can really add, I can add that in, no problem at all. I can add it in either after the show or ask Jane to photograph yeah, it and then Jane has got all the information. Um, it, there were two of them and oh. they're K-Facet woven fabrics. Ah, oh, there you go. And they are beautiful. But it just, it was one of those things that it just so happened that they were sort of next to each other on the shelf yeah. and we just went... Mm. Tasty. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> um, and yeah, and the only reason I said did I have too much on the show was because... A lot of you have been asking, was I going to get the Riley Blake um, Jane Austen fabrics in? Uh, I, I wasn't going to until you asked. And then they came in. I was like, oh. It's meant to be. Good shout. <laughs> and they came in just in time for your show. Excellent. Do you want to see? It's a good fit. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. They're tasty, aren't they? They are rather, rather gorgeous. I'm going to have to get some close-ups on these because there's sort of browns and pinks and... Kind of corally tones, aren't there? There's like yeah. little kind of soft, dusky roses and... There's dusky blues in there as well. Yeah. It's but quite then, a subtle colourway, but it's really beautiful. I mean, yeah. Really good. Really beautiful. And... Um, There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are all on the show. This is my favourite out of these. I like to think that it's a folly. I'm and pretty sure she and had what's follies. what's not to love about a folly? That's right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, there are some fancy flo flollies. Fancy That's flollies? Lollies? Fancy follies going on there. Yeah. If indeed they are follies. Well, that one with the kind of pagoda top, it, it looks like a folly. And then you've got the one below it that looks like a folly and then the one with the kind of domed the one with the onion skin top on it the kind of domed right, that looks like off. that looks like um in the 17th century they used to do stunt work caskets and the tents that the kings and queens used to stand under used to look like that i mean that could be it i don't know why <laughs> or it could be like um like the palace that they have down in brighton the pavilion yeah the pavilion yeah because that's all domes isn't it all the way along yes nice Anyway, it's my favourite. Um, so, <laughs> I just want to buy all that as well. Uh, and then this gorgeous redness mm. going on. But with sort of, again, that soft, corally, pinky malarkey yeah. happening. Well, they, the they've made really exciting jumps forward in chemical dyeing and uh, in the dyeing process. And they'd got some really exciting new reds at that time. So, uh, so um, that's probably why, where that yeah. inspiration had come from. Yeah. Shuffle that over there so that you can see a bit, but not too much. All that's beautiful. Absolutely. And all of that is available for you to cut to <coughs> order. So it's by the half meter. You decide how many half meters you would like in your life. <laughs> the way you're stroking the fabric. Well, I mean, yes, that's <laughs> part of the job. I said to Jane yesterday when she came, and I'm like, I'm really sorry, Jane, you've got to do some cutting today. And she just went, I'm stroking. Yeah, fabric stroker extraordinaire. It's okay. It's, I'm yeah. stroking. It's not tough, is it? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. 
Should we see who's with us today, Helen? Yeah. Let's see who has joined us. Have we got the gang together? Well, I hope the gang's together. Me too. You know. Me too. Um, otherwise, it's just you and me. Uh, right. We have got Jacqueline and Jan. Hello. Hi. And Diane and Sue and Kaz. Who says? Good morning. Good morning. Um, and Helen and Patricia uh, and Linda and Carol. The cook. Oh, my mama. Is that your mum? That's my mama. Hi. <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> Hi. Who said that we should really do a show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! You ask, we shall do it for you. Uh, Donna and Leslie and Vivian, good morning. And Heidi, who says morning. Um, there was lots of oohs Ooh, going on, which yeah. makes me sing it. Nice. Uh, and Jennifer and Geraldine and Ali, good morning. Hi. And Naomi P, good morning. And Ali. No, I don't, don't like the way you're laughing when you say that. Well, no, because her name's Alison, and yeah. as we just had Naomi P, yeah. I nearly just shortened it to Ali G. Oh, okay. But then I realised that... With me jewelry. <laughs> was suddenly where I went in my head, okay. and I was like, maybe Alison Green doesn't want to be, you know, Ali G with me jewelry. Alison, Ali, you're welcome either way. Uh, you could be welcome. street or otherwise. You are welcome here. <laughs> you found your people. <laughs> yeah, everyone's welcome. Uh, street or cul-de-sac? I mean, <laughs> yes, absolutely. We're, we're more cul-de-sac here. It's all fine. Uh, <laughs> Benny and Grace and Kate. Good morning, Nanette. I like that. We're more cul-de-sac. <laughs> <laughs> and Elizabeth, who says, "Yay, morning. morning!" Haven't started your kit yet, but I love the quality. Oh, I mean, you know, good. if there's one thing you're going to bring us, it's quality. <laughs> yeah. And a few giggles. And a few giggles. But it's okay, because Alison Green, Ali G, has said good morning, everyone. Excellent. Good. <laughs> I don't know whether she said that before. <laughs> I possibly... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I talk and then my brain catches up. That's all right. That happens to all of us. Yeah. Patricia <laughs> says, good morning, ladies. Looking forward to seeing your show from St Ives in Cornwall. Very nice. Do you know what? If there was one place these colours would look Absolutely, phenomenal, yeah. it's in St Ives. Definitely. We were watching a programme yesterday about St Ives. I say I, we were. Um, I came in part way through as they were showing humpback whales and stuff just off the coast of St oh. Ives. Um, I think it was Rick Stein. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what he wanted with a humpback whale. but Never questioned things I like that. <laughs> there he was. Um, Give a Gallic shrug and step backwards, that's what I say. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But they have seals and everything. But when my, oh. mom, when my mum and dad used to live in Cornwall, they used to get seals up their river. Oh. And the, my mum would often see a little seal bobbing about at the, at the river at the bottom of the garden. Um, good morning, Kay. Hello. And Anne as well. And Liz and Heather and Rona. Good morning. Good morning. And Becky, good morning, everyone. Hope you're well. Loving all these new fabrics, Natasha. Just beautiful. Uh, you asked I obeyed. And um, because they'd be... Uh, Can't I will be better. honest. If they'd have been hideous, I wouldn't have got them. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, you have uh, because because it's you the all tribe. Have excellent taste. Absolutely. You asked the hive mind, and they they gave you a suggestion. Exactly. Yeah, that's just it. Cassandra Ladybug Parker has joined us. Now Ooh. there's a name. You, you, she sounds like she belongs in the Thunderbirds, and I love that about uh, that about that name. I mean, it's all going on. It's rivaling Sarah Snaggy Fairbank Williams in my love of names of people that watch. Wow. I know. I know. It's a favourite. Sarah, you know that. I do like it's, that. Yeah. Uh, and Grace and Lo, good morning. I now have four screens, work, sewing and a team's meeting. <laughs> Eating Rice Krispies and drinking coffee, winning at multitasking. This is yeah. where you end up putting your Rice Krispies in your ear. Oh, well, yeah, or just dribbling it <laughs> in a slightly unattractive Thought it was manner. my phone. <laughs> it didn't quite work. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, the dribbling bit, I can only speak for myself. <laughs> uh, it's just... You know what happens. <laughs> Morning, Myra. Myra, you need to tell me more about your horses, by the way. So Myra and her partner have um, have an understanding mm. that whatever gets spent on the horses, yes. she gets to spend on fabric. I like that. Which would be great in this house if it wasn't me that had the horse on the fabric. Oops. It's cheaper than therapy. And, or divorce. And divorce. Yeah. So, you know. Whatever yeah. helps to keep your boat afloat. Absolutely, I don't say that. Stephen will want another boat. I just get rid of that one. He called it. What was it called? I can't remember. It was something ridiculous. 
<laughs> it went very quickly uh, when I moved in. Uh, morning, ladies. I'm prepared for this morning's laughter fest, said Alison. Aww. I mean, we can't promise anything, but we've giggled so far, so all is good. Um, looking forward to a veritable box of delights. Aww. And for once, not walking dogs so can watch live. Valerie, welcome. Fantastic. Welcome, welcome. I'm sure the dogs won't mind. Um, oh, Ali man uh, Alison managed to get her Tilda and Kay subscriptions. Thank you, SJ. SJ's been sorting out like everything she's Excellent. a dream uh two separate accounts so hobby <laughs> doesn't see that i've got two do you know what whatever works where we hadn't been going for very long when we had someone ask a little favor <laughs> could we say that they'd won their order in a competition <laughs> <laughs> okay congratulations is uh, <laughs> everyone's a winner <laughs> Everyone's a Everyone's winner. Everyone's a winner. Just generally winning at life. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, you know, it is a. It, just so you know, ladies, it, it is a. It, it is a service we offer. Uh, June says morning. Very wet and windy here. Just played catch the wheelie bin as it disappeared down the road. <laughs> Where's that? That's uh, Eastbourne. Wow. Okay. So south coast sea breeze. Yeah. Lovely. I spoke to my mum this morning. She didn't. Well, they need to be chained to that. something. They could fly like kites. What, June. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've done that. Well, maybe that the sincere. wheelie bins, but if, you, if that works, how to take the dogs for a walk, attach yourself to the dog with the leads, give the dog some some weights. You know those things that people use in the gym around their ankles? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would do it. You could take them out like a balloon. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, ta- yeah. I mean, it's a look, right? It's Never stand a- downwind if you're taking your dog for a fly. Absolutely. Could you imagine? Uh, what weight are the Sanderson fabrics? But weight? I don't know. Uh, well, they're quilting weight. They're not, um, so they're not upholstery weight, they're quilting weight. Um, that's, yeah, that's as much as I know. I can't tell you GSMs or anything, but it's, it's quilting weight rather than upholstery weight. But I think you can get away with it because it's a really <coughs> lovely, it's a really lovely close weave. So you'd Definitely. be all right. Good morning, Natasha. Busy on uh, end year accounts. Uh, mm. In my voluntary role with Girl Guiding. Bless you. I don't even do my own accounts because I, well, firstly, I would be rubbish at them and the tax man would chase me down the road. Yeah. I wouldn't need the weights. I'd just <laughs> fly. Uh, and secondly, you do, what, for fun? Each to their own? No, no, no. I We're have, all different. It's Whatever complete floats your respect. Boat. Yeah. You know, when there are just those things that you just go... A job that you don't want to do. Ever. Ever. But thank you for being that person that does. See, yeah. my mum does my books, bless her, and, that, and then um, I get an accountant to do my forms because I sleep better at night knowing they're done correctly. <laughs> well, that's just it, isn't it? You've got to be above You approach. have to know yourself. Well, you... Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. I've just got a new accountant. He's brilliant. And really nice. Oh, that's good. You know, I'm all happy about that. Um, which I'm sure you are all thrilled about as well. Uh, right. Um, well, I don't think this would work from prison, so <laughs> they probably are thrilled about it. I just don't think the stripes would work for me. You've been like the kingpin. Yeah, and then in jail. You, I, yeah, I mean, you could. You I'd could be right with the arrows. You could decorate the place. I could. I mean, that's a lot of blank space to decorate, isn't it? It would be like in Paddington Bear 2. <laughs> Uh, especially for my love of China, we would we'd have beautiful afternoon teas. I mean, the gentrification of Holloway. Yeah, it's um, it could happen. Winston Green. It could happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm not hoping it happens because I'm quite happy here. To be I'm honest, I'm glad to hear that. And that's, that's why, not the plan. Again, we have good accountants. Uh, morning, Jojo. She says hello, Tash. Sorry, we'll have to watch on catch up. I was trying to connect my mum's tech to the new route. Oh, you can stop there. Um, Fair enough, could that's take a good hours. enough reason. Could take hours. <laughs> um, I'm going to, talking of tech, move out of your way so that you can come in and Marvelous. do your thing. Do my thing. And uh, yeah, I'll be over there, peeps. Good, good. Marvellous. Right. Hello, hello. Uh, haven't been here since New Year, so Happy New Year. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Feels like ages, doesn't it? Oh, well, I mean, Where's a bit's happened. Forever? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Anyway, hope you're all well. Uh, good to be back. And um, what I was going to say about the Riley, uh, Riley Blake designs was um, that's the Jane Austen at Home collection, which is really beautiful. And it's based on um, pieces of paperwork, uh, handwriting from by Jane Austen, and also a coverlet, um, which I, I think this, it's sometimes called a quilt, but it's not padded, so it's not a quilt, it's a coverlet, that Cassandra, Jane's sister, Jane's mother and Jane stitched together and it's oh, wow. on view at the Jane Austen Museum, the House Museum, which is at Where Chawton is in Hampshire. Have you been? I haven't, but is they did a really list? good project. It is on my list. Um, they did a really good project, um, I want to say two years ago, which was a uh, big embroidery that. project um, that I think you can still view if you go by their website. Not now, after the break. So, um, <laughs> yeah, stay with us, stay with now. us, people, stay um, with us. Yeah, <laughs> stay in the room. Um, but yeah, so, but these are based on, um, they've created pieces based on um, fabrics. So, the quilt was made from, the quilt coverlet was made from um, dressmaking fabrics of the time. So, oh, they nice. were kind of the, the fabrics that they probably would have had dresses made out of. Beautiful. Um, so, it's a really good point of reference. So, it's taken inspiration from that. And yeah. then there's also some which have got the handwriting and musical notes on. Um, that they would have played and letters that they wrote. So it's a really, uh, really lovely um, period, um, modern modern fabrics, but period inspired, really strong, really I love strong that. link. I, I so. really love that. We've, we, uh, yeah, we, you get a few collections that come through like that. and Yeah, it's got a really lovely flavour. It's just, it just feels very authentic, but it's also for the modern, it's suitable for modern You see, use. it's interesting that you say that because I look at it without your your mm. knowledge, your historical knowledge, and go, it's really pretty, I wonder if, and you come along and go, yeah! <laughs> yeah. That makes me yeah. happy. It also feels like there's some of the, um, some of the quite eccentric wallpapers they had at the time as well, the hand-printed wallpapers. Um, the oh. one with the folly looks like it should be a wallpaper. So we me, had a bedroom wallpaper that was hand-printed, mm. Victorian, nice. beautiful. Stephen hated it, but we rented and we went there to rip it off the walls. Okay. And I loved it, so I yeah. wouldn't have done anyway. Yeah. And then our Ridgeback Jack, when we rescued him, he had really bad ear infections oh, no. and kennel cough and everything. He was so run down. He was so poorly. Yeah. And he caught his ear on one of his head shakes. Well, we added to the decor with sort of these rosebuds <laughs> up the wall with blood splats <laughs> oh, no. as well from the dog's ear. I mean... Could you tell? No, happily <laughs> not. <laughs> Which, to be honest, if it had been any other wallpaper, you'd have cursed. But it just blended in. It was a treat. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing about, um, about some of these designs from that period. Uh, they are quite eccentric, some of them. Cause, Perfect. Because, like, you know... A lot of modern kind of pattern um, is a very, very strong repeat that's quite clear. Yeah. Um, and some of the traditional ones are far more eccentric. They're still a repeat, but they're far more eccentric and kind of more hidden. Kind of love that. So, um, so yeah, so I'm not surprised you could get away with that. <laughs> Perfect. You know, when you've never been, when you're trying to get your deposit back on a place and you've never been so grateful for a ridiculously eccentric wallpaper. Yep. I... I actually made the mistake once of whilst on holiday with uh, two of my best friends. Um, one of them was turning 30 and she doesn't really like surprises. And um, I had taken in my suitcase a whole load of things to decorate the room with. So Amazing. whilst they were at breakfast, I snuck back to the room and decorated the room. But I'd forgotten to bring any blue tackle or sellotape. So the only thing I'd got was plasters. Amazing. <laughs> but they were plasters that they were the see-through type, so they're suitable for everybody. Um, <laughs> and it worked absolutely fine until I tried to take them down, at which point I just had to cut the pad the bit, out bit out because I couldn't get it off the wall. <laughs> and who knew that plasters are dear to well, like, painted walls that way? And, um, and I was like, when they come and check the room, the house come and, come and check the room, they'll do it in the day. I was like, but when the next people come in and they turn the lamp on, suddenly there'll be these patches shining, <laughs> <laughs> shining off the walls. And I was like, it feels like one of those like confession moments on the radio, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, happily, did you get your deposit back? It was all OK. I did. It was absolutely fine. And considering some of the awful things that happened during the rest of the holiday, I don't feel too bad about it. But, uh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It's all good then. I, do you know? Let it go. But it did. I did. I did think to myself, the next people who were kind of coming in, because that's the kind of thing. If I went to a hotel room and then turned the lamp on at night and there was these shiny bits, like these patches, I'd, that would keep me awake at night because I'd be thinking about it. And wondering what it was. Because wondering. plasters wouldn't be your first port of call <laughs> for what are these? Oh, I know. They must have been used instead of blue tack for a 30th birthday. Doesn't necessarily. No. Like aliens would spring to mind probably before that. You'd assume it was holding something in. It was structural or something untoward was happening in that room. Oh, my goodness. So Gemma yesterday shared this great long story about this woman whose daughter wanted a mermaid baby. Now, obviously, you can get, like, mermaid, fully grown mermaid dolls, but you okay. can't get f- mermaid baby dolls are not something that you can get. But she finally tracked one down and bought it. She didn't buy one of those taxidermy things, did no, she? No, 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 okay. because mermaids aren't real. No, but in the Victorian period, they used to make them. Okay, this one. We'll come Victorian. back to that. We'll come back to that because that's a whole conversation that needs to happen <laughs> yeah. in between some stitching. But yeah. what happened was, so this this daughter comes down, this little girl Ellie comes down, s- takes one look at this hideous, hideous doll, and just like shakes her head, going, "Mummy, what, what, like, what is that? What were you thinking? What were you thinking? Exactly that." So. The mother is distraught because this is an epic Christmas present fail and, you know, the daughter does not have the doll of... Anyway, she starts looking up, like, doll hospitals to try and have this doll put right. And (laughs) Anyway, to cut a long story short, she finally sends it off to these Germans that run, like, a doll and bear hospital that do restoration. Okay. And then she doesn't hear anything for a long time. And so she keeps ringing and going, you know, have you have you managed to sort out, you know? And she said, you know, it's such and such with the mermaid doll. And they're like, oh, yeah. The next thing she knows, she has the FBI on the on her on her premises. No. Because what the mermaid was actually stuffed with was two kilos of cocaine. She'd bought it off Etsy. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry, merry, merry <laughs> Christmas! I know, so then she has, her whole family is then, like, all their whole history is then checked for drug smuggling, drug dealing, the whole lot, because of this weird mermaid doll she bought off Etsy for her daughter. You know, somewhere back in the 1600s, she's got an uncle, ten times removed, called Blackbeard Jake, who was a smuggler off the Cornish coast. And, right, yeah. And goes for so if you go That's back, terrible. we all have some... I know. I know. Really weird. Always check the insides of your parcels. Exactly. But you just wouldn't... You wouldn't... That's oh, that's all right. Ali G says that's her nickname. Oh, phew. Oh, cool. That's Excellent. all right then. Oh, that, that happy big days. sigh of relief. We've offended <laughs> nobody. We've, we've yet to start and we haven't offended anybody. It's going well. We've done well. We've done well. <laughs> we should just stop now. Uh, <laughs> so my question to you is, what yes. is the difference between this and tapestry? Right. Um, so basically, tapestry is a misnomer. So people get really confused. What? what? So tapestries are actually woven. So you weave them on a loom. OK. But a lot of embroidery is created to imitate other things that are very expensive or very kind of hard to get hold of. Right. So during during the past. So a lot of our embroidery stitches are used to kind of replicate things and to imitate. Right. Because a lot of people had embroidery skills. They develop these particular stitches over time <coughs> to imitate those things because, as I say, they were cheaper to get hold of. So... Um, so basically, this technique is a really old technique. Yeah. But it was later on called tapestry because it looks like woven tapestries. So it's just an easier. So it could be called needlepoint. Hang it on. Could be, yeah. But then what about the Bayer tapestry? Is that Wrong. not actually a tapestry? No, it's an embroidery. Oh come on! What? But the Bayer embroidery doesn't sound quite the same, does it? Because <laughs> we've got so used to calling it tapestry. But yeah, it's. Well, that's just well, changed. The bedrock of your whole belief system is completely shaken. So, what's that thing of flowers that I've got on my wall in the it's bathroom? It's a needlepoint or a canvas. Yeah, it's yeah it's like a tapestry. Yeah, it's it's. I always thought I did tapestry with my grandma on a Saturday. What was I doing? Well, I mean that, that is a very popular name for it. So we can call it tapestry if you like, but I might shudder slightly when we're doing it. No, 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 no! Don't shudder. I would like to be correct. <laughs> 
So it's based, it's on canvas ground. So the fabric is canvas. So you okay. can see it's got holes in it. It's nice and even. And we're using mono canvas in this, in this case. So you a can see. A canvas? A mono canvas. Just one. Yeah, so it means there's one set of holes because you can get double canvas or double Penelope, which is two sets of holes. Why did Penelope sneak in? I know. Well, basically... Thunderbirds birds again. It's, we uh, keep coming back to it. I know. <laughs> so basically, um, all we're going to do with this is we can choose... We're, in this particular project, going to go from one hole to the next one diagonally. That right. is it. Okay. okay. We're just going to change colour. So this was what I always used to get wrong with my grandma's tapestry yeah. was the angle that I did it at yes. and she'd have to discreetly unpick it all when I went home. <laughs> After we'd sat watching Fred Astaire and Judy Rogers on a oh, Saturday matinee. Top hat. Yeah. Putting on the ritz. Love it. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So, yeah, she'd be very generous and let me, and of course, yeah. I would just do whatever she had sitting around. So yeah. I would just do that. And of course, my tension was completely, everything was different. My angle, of my, like I was abysmal, but I was also seven. But so you're enthusiastic. I was. And that's the important thing. Enthusiastic. <coughs> so enth still am. Yeah. Don't lose that. No. The enthusiasm is the important bit. The rest of it you can learn. You can't learn enthusiasm. No, you cannot. That's very true. Hmm. So, yeah. but um, you can be enthused by other people, but that doesn't last long. So you need to, you need to find the thing that enthuses you, you, that you feel happy about. But if you've got natural enthusiasm, then that's a gift. It is. I'm going to tell my husband that when he's like, can you just be quiet? <laughs> my enthusiasm <laughs> is my gift to you, darling. <laughs> uh, Karen says, morning. Thanks for getting the fabric. I thought I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Never it, enough. The thing is... This whole thing about how much you're spending on fabrics, yes, of course, everyone has a budget they're working to, whatever that may be. But don't forget, you are curating your own collection. Yes. It's... You are. It, yeah. And as I tried to explain to my dad on the phone the other day, buying fabric and doing something with it, two different hobbies. It's also cheaper than drugs. So, I mean, unless you're buying a mermaid online and yeah, you which is hideous, and nobody else wants. Yeah, exactly. So turns out, you know, it, it could fortune. be a lot worse. You could be spending your money on on things that are a lot worse than this. This is so, good for your health. Yeah, yes. With that little kick of joy when Absolutely. you purchased it, when it arrives, when but you do something didn't with it, come potentially, from cocaine. or if you just stroke it on the shelf, that's fine. It's all good. It's However, all good. whatever works for you, that's I'm I'm up for it. You know, so <laughs> find your joy where you find your joy. Don't question it. So, um, but yeah, so. The stitch angle should go from bottom left to top right. So if I just bring this in a second. <coughs> I love those colours. You've done so, so well. Oh, thank you. So you can see it goes across ways like that. So bottom left to top right. Okay. And um, it may be slightly clearer on one that I've part worked. So if I just, oh, I'm doing well today with the shuffling things in into the correct place. Very so well. bottom left to top right. Okay. That is as complex as this gets. So it's, it's such a nice thing because, as I say, <coughs> unfortunately, I've not been that well. So um, it's one of those things. That actually, I know we talked about this project before, but this is such a nice thing because you can see it. It's drawn onto the fabric for you. So you don't have to count anything, um, which quite often is the thing that puts people off. Yeah. So you can pick it up and put it down. And what you'll do is you'll work in sections. So I've suggested that you'd work, you know, say a stripe or you'd work, you know, the, the narrow stripe to start with or you'd work your your leaf at the bottom. The thing that you generally work last is the background of the oh, actual panel okay. because right. you want the shape to define, be defined by um, the, the actual form rather right. than the background. Okay. Um, and then your form might look a bit funny. So. No one wants a funny form. Just, no one wants a funny form. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I started um, last night, I was starting to fill in the background of this one. And you can see, because I'd already worked all of the stuff in here, I'd work the background here, but because I have yet to work the acorns, uh, I, had to go to, I had to go to the studio and get the correct shade of wool. So for this particular one, so um, now I've got that, I'll work the acorns and then fill up with the background and then that's done. Tell us about your wool, Helen. Right, so the wool, it's lovely. It's Appleton's Wool, um, which is a British company. And um, I want to say, is it Yorkshire? They're actually Oxfordshire oh, are they? based. They were London. Um, they're now headquarters is, is in um, Oxfordshire. But it's um, a very traditional company. They were the same company that the William Morris company used originally for all of their embroideries. Oh, nice. um, but you can see, I mean, they're just so tasty. And what we're using is um, a, a two ply twisted wool, which is a cruel weight, so a cruel wool weight. 
So they've got a long staple fibre um, of the hair in, in it, basically the, the um, and it makes it nice uh, to stitch with. You use two strands of it to mm -hmm. stitch to cover this, so that gives you really good coverage because you don't want the canvas peeking through. You want a full, good solid, well, full body, a solid coverage. cover of that. So, um, so basically, two strands on this will give you that really easily. Beautiful. Um, Let's just have a look at this. Your eye for colour is phenomenal. Well. I mean, colour is one of my favourite things. I absolutely love it. So um, it's just one of those things that just makes me feel so happy. And um, so if I bring those in front, in yeah. so you get, you get... Look at those. Um, <gasps> just those pinks, that ombre of pink. I know, they're tasty, aren't they? Yes. So, um, but yeah, so it's, it's a beautiful heritage thread. Um, and as I say, it's the same type of thread that's been used in embroidery for centuries. Um, here so um, you can't you can't go wrong with it and it fades within its colour family so let's say that you wanted to put some of these into you could you could do anything with it. you could frame it you could put it um, do extra stitching you could ap apply bands on there you could put um, you know some of the um, Sanderson fabrics on um, and you could make it into a footstool. You could put it onto feet. Cushions. You can't put feet on it. You now, say that. Come on. But no. But this is this is perfect for that because actually, what happens? I know. Have feels, you seen feels, the state of my children's feet? <laughs> feels counterintuitive. But the thing is, this is one of those things. They fade, the the wool fades within its colour family, so it only gets slightly softer and muter okay. over a very long period of time with a lot of sun exposure. Right. So it's long wearing. It's sturdy. It's really good. Um, and then the back of the, the piece, um, with the slight friction of having feet on it or having a back on it or a bum on it, whatever you're doing with it, if you're sitting on it as a cushion, shush now. Um, <laughs> I've said bum, I know. Um, so I'd say it, if you like to, I really don't mind. Yeah. So um, basically the friction of this will make the fibres on the back slightly felt together because wool will yeah, felt over, yeah. over time with movement. So um, it just becomes stronger. So... That's clever. It's nice, isn't it? So it is perfect for putting on domestic items. Equally, there's four of these. You could always make yourself a little box that you could stitch them together once they're done. And you could actually just make, um, you could line them with the, um, so you have a season on each side. That would oh, be that's quite amazing. nice. And you could use it to keep all your, you know, it could be where you keep your scissors. You could like stiffen it. You flim flam flippery in. Indeed. Your Ujima Watsits. Ujima Watsits and Flim Flam Flippery. So, yeah. So it could be it could be anything. It could be the top of a box. It could be anything. Um, so there's lots of options with that. And as I say, because um, you've got different colourways, we've got I've got the different designs here because I designed all four of them to kind of go together. So as I say, we've got the um, summer one. You might be wondering why it's not the spring one we worked first. Well, basically, I had the colours at home. That would match this. That works. I'm I wasn't allowed that. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> sounds bad. I Go was not allowed got. out. Um, so yes, yeah, sounds like an, I've got an asbo or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like we've all got asbos right it's now. Been a little bit. Like we've that, all been yeah. very bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So autumn um, with the. Should we show these close up? Let's, yeah, we can yeah. do that. So uh, as I say, we've got the uh, summer. And then we've got the autumn. I'm just giggling to myself because you know we might have slightly insulted Lo about the whole uh, Rice Krispies dribbling down your chin thing. No insult, it's just an observation of what I'd be like. <laughs> she just <laughs> says, to be honest, if I have a bra on in the day, I'm winning at life. <laughs> <laughs> and you've brushed your hair and your teeth. It's <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the dream, hair and teeth. Absolutely, you're on. really going to town for that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we've got the oh, winter I love that one. purple and green. Yeah, quite yeah. rich. It'll be really rich, this one. And then um, and then spring. So, as I say, it's one of those, they can stand individually or they'll be able to go as a, as a family. Um, and they'll just, just look really nice. And you can choose your families. Your, your families? You, choose you your can't families. choose your families. You can choose your, your, you can choose. your <laughs> fabric families to go with it. So, But I think it would be nice to kind of almost to have it with with bands you could block it up and make a really beautiful cushion with it couldn't you so it would be stunning either yeah, way however you choose to use should we i mean at some point we should probably do a show on how how to do that with these sorts of things well why don't um why don't i leave the summer one with you and you could marry it up with some of your sandersons i mean you know i'm just going to marry that up with a whole load of deep blue velvet don't you you do what makes you happy <laughs> 
<laughs> because I've got a deep blue that would just be amazing with that and it would make everything pop. Yeah. Um, well, but that's probably not what you were thinking. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you might want to Sanderson it, but um, it's fine. So you, you do what you like with it. Then I could put Sanderson on the back. Or a strip or a board or something. Oh, I, I'm going to have to think. Now you've set now me I've off. Now I've put the cat amongst the pigeons. Now you have. <laughs> now you have. So there's a whole strand on our Facebook comments going on about how people basically hide their fabric, um, you know, purchases from from various people. And Ali says that I have a friend called Natasha who sends me fabric because she's nice. <laughs> I, like I can that. be that friend. I can be that friend. You're, you're that designated friend. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Donna like says that. she's won a few competitions too. <laughs> I, I used to have. I used to live abroad for a while, and there was um, a lot of ladies that I used to know there that used to keep gold in their wardrobe. <laughs> like, Amazing. In their Why socks and shoes, um, and yeah, because it was it was a place that you'd, you'd you could purchase gold quite easily. So, and it was a, kind of a contingency. So, um, so. I'm thinking that maybe hiding your fabric in your socks is going to be a difficult. Winner. But if you're doing that Marie Kondo thing of rolling everything up, which I hate, by the way, she is not my spiritual person, um, that rolling thing up into a tiny little like roll, then you could always stuff your socks with them. So kind of twice winning, you can see what socks you've got and you've got hidden your fabric. I mean, perfect, right? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, or just stuff it down your boots so they keep their shape. I wondered what you were going to say then. <laughs> I mean, I always wonder what's <laughs> going to come out. Um, Diane, the width of the Sanderson is 44 inches. Um, you know what I'm going to have to go and run and get, which mm. might make my uh, my thingamajiggity crackle, but when you put those colours together, it reminded me of what's just landed in the warehouse, and I've got Ooh. to show you. Am I going to see something brand spanking you? Yeah. It's only just arrived. Marvelous. It's not like new on the market, but it's new to us. Excellent. So, um, do you should, do you want, should I put you on a close up well, to stitch? If you a put bit? me to a close up, and I'm going to start demonstrating. Could you grab me a cup of a glass of water as well? Yeah. Thank you. Of course, can. <coughs> I can do all these things. What I'll do is I'll turn my. Mm, I might crackle a bit. Okay. Well, I'll just talk loud. All right. So, right. So, what we're going to do then is um, I want to show you the basics of starting. So, um, I'm going to find the thread. Now, the end that you want to pull is the one on the inside of the skein always because that's the one that's going to run. So, the one on the outside, when you pull it, will make a little nest. The one on the inside will always be the one that runs smoothly. Okay. So, if in doubt, um, just open it out and find the inner one. Okay, now I'm going to take a fingertip to elbow length, so I'm just manoeuvring so you can see my elbow, but I'm going to then double it over. And, um, and then I'm going to just thread my needle onto that. So it's caught in the middle. It's just easier to start that way. a knot in the end some people have asked previously about how i do my knots basically i hold it hold it onto my finger i wrap around the tip and then i put the end through okay if it's a very fine thread i'd wrap around twice <coughs> okay now this is the interesting thing about starting with canvas work because basically what i want to do is i want to start in the area that i'm going to be working um, or as near as possible um, and i want to allow about an inch um, and I want to start working. So basically, I've put my knot on the top and I'm starting about an inch away and I'm just going to fill in this area and as I work, I'll end up stitching over that thread on the back. So obviously I came, up, came down here, came up here. So there's a thread running through on the back. So as I stitch this area, I'm going to end up holding that in place. So then when I get near it, rather than it getting in my way, you can then lift it up and snip it off. So there's no tufts or anything. Yeah. So it saves you having knots on the back or anything like that. So it's nice and swift and easy to start working. So all I'm doing is I'm stitching um, up, in, up in the bottom left corner, down in the bottom right. So it's 10 stitch that I'm doing. And then what I want to try and do, if possible, 
is go down into the shared hole because when you come up in the shared hole you end up pulling fibers up through through to the front and it can dislodge the stitch that you've got and change the tension so you so, go down through it not up yeah so i'm going <coughs> down into that shared hole so as a good rule of thumb okay Oh, now you see, I'm just catching up on everyone's messages. Mm -hmm. Alison is trying to recover from a Zoom fitness session with her trainer. Oh. Madness. She <laughs> says, how many times can I go up and down the stairs in four minutes? I mean, that's just like trying to get the kids out for school, to be fair, <laughs> is how many things can they forget and I have to go up and down the stairs for. Um, Trudy says she has a friend with a Great Dane pup, which is huge already, and she's named Tinkerbell. Aww. Amazing. Beautiful. Um, Myra's got uh, thoroughbreds. She says they're nutters. Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, he's rather fabulous, though. <laughs> um, Margaret says that in her mind, you're blonde. Um, yeah, it changes quite a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was violet until yesterday. Wow. Um, so, because I, I, I hadn't been feeling very well. As you know, I have an affinity to colour or love colour. Yes. My hair does change quite a lot. Um, so and yet it's still good condition. I don't know how you do it. Uh, Moroccan hair oil. I use their uh, hair mask and uh, I put their hair oil in every time I've washed my hair before I um, let it dry. I, and I don't use a hair dryer, I just leave it to dry. Which is why it looks like a cloud today. <laughs> a purple cloud? Um, I feel like, do you know what I reminded me of myself this morning in a nice way? Um, be kind to yourself, people. Um, I reminded myself of, you know, in Sleeping Beauty, the three fairies, that, that one, one of them's purple, one of them's pink, and one of them's blue, and they one of those. pop, and they change the colour. I, I reminded myself of, because it was just all fluff. Oh, and I was beautiful. just like, just lilac fluff. Um, so, yeah, but it was really bright, vibrant, like purple, kind of all heading to, to that tone. Amazing. <laughs> Yesterday, because, um, as I say, I hadn't been feeling fantastic, and then... Um, and when you're feeling a bit drab, I thought, well, that could do with something on it. So, so I just put a tint on it, and uh, it's a washout thing. So it'll kind of within ten washes, it'll be gone. So it will be blonde by that point. Um, well, that's amazing. See, that that would just suck, stick to my hair, and I'd end up pink for for forever. But she says that it's you're blonde because that because you were blonde when she first saw you. Yeah, this is. Um... <laughs> and she said, would, what, what colour are you calling it? Because it's great. Well, this is, uh, I, I will say the company, it's a company called Gypsy Shrine, or just Sh Shrine. You can find them on Facebook and online and everything. They've got loads of products. But um, you mix it with conditioner, but you decide how strong you want it to be. So oh, it's like you can amazing. put a couple of drops in with your conditioner. So you get, like, the, the thing you order, it comes with a little mixing bowl. Um, so it tells you the line to put your conditioner into. And then, um, so it's your normal conditioner, but then you've tinted it. So it's quite clever. So That's then you put it on to dry hair, and you could put it on in streaks, or you could put it on, you could put multiple colours on, do your own mermaid hair if you wanted. Just you wait, you're going to know the day I've tried this product, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> I'll try it at the back underneath first. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's exciting. And you could just tip your ends, you could do anything you like, but I just went for it, because <laughs> uh, I was it. feeling drab. So uh, nobody wants that. So basically, yes, yeah, so I went for the violet, and uh, just decided to pop it on and see what happened. So here we are. But as I say, it, it was really bright, vibrant, but I quite like this, actually. So it's, no, it's quite nice. It. And uh, everyone's enjoying it <laughs> quite a lot. Thank so you. that's all good. So now I know it works. We could have a whole rainbow of hair next time I see it. It could be I something completely different. would enjoy that <laughs> yeah. enormously. So, yeah. Well, I might do yours next time I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But it's, um, yeah, I... I uh, was on FaceTime to my niece and she was saying um, she's eight and she was she was like oh, she loves purple and she was just like oh, I I can have that you so must be her like, hero well the thing is if she's not in school she can colour hair can't she well, well unfortunately she's actually going to school oh. so I did say to her if we're allowed to all meet up after after during half term if that's possible then I will I will colour her hair for half term because um, as I say it's a washout one it's not um, it's all good it's, it's not good. it's not permanent so um but yeah she's glitter sparkle glitter constantly dancing and singing good girl um she is uh she loves she's a little ray of sunshine isn't she she is she's amazing so um, now you see Ginny says that it's wonderful to see you looking so well she said throughout oh, her you. cancer adventure she's i used the mantra taken from the song of another helen yeah. uh, the great helen reddy i am strong i am invincible oh, i am I woman i am woman 
Excellent. Good for I you. I don't think I know it. She said a quick loud burst that that oh, gets me through all goodness. sorts. You've I need gone to go and look, look this up. up. It's an amazing song. How do I not know it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. And I'm so glad to hear that you're feeling better as well. So, yeah, it's, um, no, it's it's a brilliant song, brilliant lyrics. Who's it so, by? Um, Helen, oh, the Hello Riddy. Riddy. Yeah, yeah, that would so, be it. I'd yeah, and um, her and Maya Angelou, obviously not, not singing, but um, anything by Maya Angelou I always think is... Um, Particularly inspirational. For, what do for you women. not know, Helen? I mean, this is. <laughs> it's not very useful knowledge. It has to be said. Doesn't I mean, matter. It's um, it's it's never been useful in any other walk of life, really. <laughs> no, well, no, but I mean, it's it's useful here. Um, so, I just do the things that make me happy, and they tend to make certain other people happy too. So, I think <laughs> that's, that's what good. life should be. Find your people. That's what I say. <laughs> so, um, Elizabeth said that Penelope was the name Helen gave my nana's embroidery. Yes, it is. It's um, it's the um, there was a company um, years ago that created Penelope embroideries, and I think it's to do with Penelope and her suitors because there's always that link between um, Penelope and her suitors. She was creating this this um, piece, and the, it just she just kept going because the idea was that she said I couldn't I couldn't possibly get married until I'd until I finished my piece of work. Yeah, and um, Obviously, none of them were suitable, so she oh, kept, kept going. going. Kept so, going, and kept, yeah. keep going, keep so, going, keep going, keep yeah. swimming, keep swimming. So, yeah. So you can see this blocks in quite quickly. Yeah. So you can see that, um, as oh, I say... Oh, you would do oh. if I could actually, like, switch. <laughs> I was looking at it. Look so lovely. you can see it's beautiful. <laughs> so um, you can see it goes in quite quickly. So that section's already worked. Um, and what you can do then is... Um, I'm just going to snip my needle off. You can re-thread that up when you want to come back to that. Um, and then what you can do is you can decide I'm going to form the outside of my leaf. Okay. So I've got three shades of green that I'm going to work through um, here. Oh, there. From a bit here special. to here, so the edge of that leaf. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to not create stripes. So I want to kind of speckle them together. So I'm just going to explain. Is this how you like do makeup that. blending on your eye makeup? A little bit. A little bit like that. So the idea is that rather have it than having a firm edge, so the outer edge of the leaf will have a firm edge because otherwise it won't look like a leaf. But the inner edge where I want to blend into another shade, into yeah. another colour, I'm just going to dot some of the colour, some of this okay. darker shade down. Does it matter how, how much you dot? No, not really. I mean, it depends on the space you've got. So I've got three colours and I've got probably about a centimetre at the widest point to get through. So if you look from here to here, there's about a centimetre. OK. So what I want to try and do in that case is I'm going to put some of the outer edge in, in the darkest colour. I'm yeah. going to put some of the inner edge in the lightest colour. Yeah. And then that gives me a definition of what to fill in in the middle. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it. OK. So, um, so again, leaving your knot on top, you know you're going to cover it up. Oh, I missed this bit because I was busy looking at fabric. <laughs> yeah. So basically what you're going to do is you put your knot on the top of the fabric, come up about an inch away from it. Yeah. Because you know you're going to cover all of this up anyway. And then you're going to um, work. And as you work over that thread on the back, oh, it you, gets can then, you can then snip that knot off. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So... Now, you see, Margaret said that she grew up with several tapestries, in inverted yeah. commas now, so you don't shudder, um, <laughs> that her dad had embroidered while bedbound. He yes. dislocated his hip in 1936, um, and pre-antibiotics, they wouldn't operate. Oh, oh. bless him. Um, she says, I have the chair and two fire screens. One converts to a card table. I oh, love those. Those They're Trump amazing. card tables. Yeah. They're so cool. I really want one in my yeah. life. Uh, she says, a niece well, has the piano one? still. <gasps> Why don't we make a kit of that? That would be cool. Is that a thing we can do? Yeah, of course. Of course. So, why not? <laughs> That's amazing. Right, we're doing that. Um, <laughs> she says, a niece has the piano stool, a very useful piece of furniture. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's yeah. back up here. Yeah, you, yeah. you can do us a tapestry. Yeah. Needle point or canvas, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wow, that converts to a card tape. Oh my goodness. Do you know what? Freddie would love that. Because what we could do... He has a thing about cards and chess and all that kind of stuff. Because what we could do is... Because um, obviously people nowadays don't have a designated card table ge generally. I mean, you might have. In which they case, should. Kudos to you. But most people use their uh, 
the table in the dining room or whatever to play to games on. So what we could do is we could create like a, um, we could stiffen the back of it and it could be a thing that you fold up into four, like a board game. But then as you bring it out, it's got tapestry, needlepoint canvas slash, um, on the top, which looks like games counter. So it could be anything. It could be a mixture of board games and cards or it could be a traditional card game. I mean, that's amazing. With the little counters. We, oh, we could do little... Um, little gold coins and we could do little in the, in the kind of 18th century they used to have little mother of pearl counters like little fish and little circles oh uh, well we're going to find so, those and they could we could use uh, no no we could do um we could stitch them in in metallized thread this is amazing um Excellent. margaret thank you it's now see what you started thank you <laughs> it only takes a minute <laughs> and like that's amazing. Yeah, we, we can do I don't know where I'm stitching. I'm starting to stitch in the yellow bit. Here. Well, I know. Um, I've got I mean, very I don't excited. Know, but this is, this but is very exciting. Hang yeah, on. we could do that. Two fire screens, one that converts to a card table. So would we have to put like a perspex over the top to protect it? No, because as, as described, this is one of those things that responds well to friction. Does it so respond be able well to, to spill tea? I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, red wine would be more problematic, but... Um. Yeah, Fred is seven. He doesn't drink that much red wine. He, <laughs> he has a little sip on a Sunday <laughs> of someone's glass. Just the occasional. left around. Yeah, well, um, just hoovering up the dregs. Um, well, I don't know. We could, we could um, as I say, you could actually use it so that you protect your tabletop. So it's your thing, you know, so when you're playing bridge or... I don't know if there's many bridge players out there, but... Like, My dad or plays poker bridge. Or it could be that thing that they bring it out and they put it down and they, they play the cards on top of it. It's what they used to do to protect their tabletops. Their wood used to, you know, on the card tables, the embroidered card tables, um, you had a way of, you could either flip them over and then the embroidery was all, there was like glass that used to come off or, yeah. Or you, That's but you, phenomenal. But you'd actually work it, you'd, you'd play your games so it wasn't, on the embroidery. I assume, yeah, you see, I sort of assumed that you used to play cards on sort of a felt top because I've been to too many casinos. Yeah, well, you could, but as I say, but I mean, it's not as much fun. you could, um, you could definitely. It was traditionally you'd have that embroidered top. I think that we should start a board game, card game revolution, and <laughs> just bring it all back. Yeah. Well, one of my friends actually belongs to a board. Well, before COVID, I don't know if it still goes on, but a board game group, and they they would have a different board game that they'd go and play every month, I think, and it would be like they'd have to read the rules at home so they'd be emailed the rules right and then so it was serious so oh, when oh, they actually right, got okay. to the place to play yeah they all knew what they were doing it was none yeah. of this have you oh what about rule two like, you know it was like what happens when we throw a six none of that they they knew they knew so, they just knew yeah. they knew that they'd, they'd yeah they'd boned up on it before that, they there's, a, there's a i don't know if it's open but in in wasn't it in the jewelry in um the custard factory i think in birmingham there was a games pub or games cafe and all the games were there. Oh, um, lots good. of different things, but you could go and play. I mean, you can do it now, but you could. Do, and, but this is the thing, though, isn't it? Because you, we, we wondered about doing um, like FaceTime chess because Freddie had just learnt to play chess oh, when COVID yeah. happened with yeah. my dad. Yeah. And he was only allowed to play chess once he beat my dad at drafts. That was oh. the thing. That's nice. And it I took like him that. months and months and months because my dad will not let you win. Fair enough. You earn the win. You earn the win. Yeah. You earn the win. Absolutely. We're like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Which meant that Freddie would run around. He ran the first time. I thought the house was on fire or something. He would run <laughs> around the house because he'd beaten Barry. Oh. He calls my dad Barry, which causes a lot of confusion. My mum my said to me, what if people think that he's not actually his grandfather he's stolen like, him yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like i think they only need to see each other together i was gonna say to i know. think you can see there's affection there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but he's comfortable yeah absolutely absolutely um oh well so. yeah we used to do that see every easter we roll easter eggs and um so like cheese rolling in gloucester a little bit but so you have to paint your boiled eggs it's, i think it's a scottish thing Again, I get a bit confused sometimes about what's what's from where, but um, and what about the scale? How so big are they? It's a it's like a chicken's egg. Okay. And <laughs> like an ostrich. <laughs> um, it's a chicken's egg, and you have to have an incline of some kind, like a hill, and you boil the egg, and then you have to decorate it so you okay. recognise your own egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's like 
you have to line them up on the on, on the mantelpiece and we judge which one's the best decorated egg i mean that's a thing yeah and then um <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to go up the top of the garden in a, in a line and then you roll the eggs. Okay. And it's not just, you have to proper go for it and bowl right. them. Okay. And then you have to keep going. So it's actual egg bowling is oof, affectionately what pretty it much, is. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. And, um, but you have to keep going and if yours is still intact, when you get to the bottom, you have to go back to the top and start again. And the last person with the egg, the most intact, it doesn't have to be fully intact. Okay. Most intact right. wins. So my dogs love a boiled egg. They'd get involved. Yeah, well, we had Mordably foxes in our garden. All over that. They were very happy about <laughs> it. Yeah. But um, so Easter, Easter's for everybody. <laughs> no, well, no, but, well, absolutely, but, absolutely. Yeah, and but it, when we started to introduce my niece and stuff to it, they were she was um, a bit upset the first year because she didn't win, and and we were like, but you earned that win. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you didn't, don't get it. Just you didn't you're win. A kid. You didn't win. Don't cry. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's the sympathy you yeah. didn't win don't cry it's that um my aunt said to my cousin this sums it up I'm pro i've probably said this before but my aunt summed it up perfectly uh how it worked in our family was um one of my cousins was a really good swimmer hmm. and she'd said to her when she was younger you know she'd been upset i think about not not winning a race when she thought she was going to and my aunt had said to her cry inside your goggles don't ever let them see you cry. Cry inside your goggles if you've got to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you see them filling up. Like, <laughs> and it is, it's just that, it's so... Popping the airlock just to let it drain. Just describe <laughs> the way we approach things. And it was just that thing, it's really funny because my sister now no. is exactly, exactly the same level of sympathy my mum used to give us, which was, cry is it falling goggles. off? If it's not falling off, Give it a dust off and keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, I do that. It's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but she'll, like, Kim will see other people now, like, making a real fuss if they've fallen over. There's obviously just a little bump. It's yeah. just they've shocked themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she'll go, what on earth's the matter with her? There's nothing wrong with her. She needs to just get up. And you're just like, ah. <laughs> Sometimes you say that on the inside. <laughs> so, Cry inside your goggles. <laughs> so, but, I'm using all of that. Yeah, so um, when she first came to us, as I say, it was uh, the Easter was the real eye-opener for her. So wow. it was that whole thing about not winning at Easter rolling. Wow. So the second year she won and she earned the win and she was very happy and we were like, see? <laughs> How much sweeter this see? tastes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so lots of people loving the card table idea. And I think in Excellent. lockdown, there has been Definitely. a revival of these sorts of things. Because oh, let's absolutely. face it, there's only so much Netflix that you can binge well, on. Well, everyone's got to the end of Netflix, haven't they? So. Oh, I think so. Have you watched, though, uh, The Queen's Gambit? <gasps> Loved it. Loved it, yeah. Loved it. Yeah, I did think yeah. about you for some reason while I was watching it. I don't know why. I think maybe because of all of the costumes oh, and it's how so they reflected stylish. where she was. I loved it. With her, anyway, brilliant. Um, Lo would also like to add a cocktail trolley into the mix. A cocktail trolley, I'd love that. Let's do a cocktail trolley as well. Come on. I mean, can we embroider an entire cocktail trolley? How does this work? I mean, that's like, that feels a bit like gorilla stitching, like doesn't it? It's uh, that thing where people turn up and covered lamp post in knitting. It's a beautiful but, thing. Yarn uh, bombing, isn't it? Is that what yeah, it's called? Yarn bombing. Gorilla, yeah, yarn bombing. Gorilla, gorilla, gorilla stitching or yarn bombing, and. Um, so yeah, but we could do we could certainly do a top for it, and um, I think all these things are possible. My grandma had the most amazing hostess trolley, oh. and I just remember her hostess trolley. She used to wheel it in on a Sunday, like, and um, did it have a lot of cake on it? That's, it well, that's... my nan was a really good cook, so her mother had been uh, a cook in service in a big house. Oh wow! And her dad was a butcher. Oh well, I mean, and uh, you know, butchery and everything. And my nan faked her medical to get into the WAFs during the war. Amazing. <laughs> this is the type of women we breed in our family. Uh, she faked her medical so she, cause she was like, I'm getting in. And the doctor had said to her, um, there's something a bit funny about this test. And she was like, you may as well let me in and save everybody's time because I'm going to every place, every polling, like drafting station until I get in today and I will be getting in. And they were like, he was like, are you sure? And they were like, uh, yep. And she was like, uh, he was like, okay, you're in. So, um, but she was a cook in, in the WAF, so she used to cook for all these, all the, all the airmen going out. She, she cooked for the airmen going off um, yeah, to Arnhem and all that. So she used to cook for them in the morning and then watch them fly out and then you could count, sit on the hill and watch them come back. Or, unfortunately not some of them, but 
yeah, so you'd go and count, she'd go and count them coming back. She was in Stranra in um she was sent to Stranra at one point and she was all over the country cooking and things wow. and um she was you see sent... if I cook for them they wouldn't want to come back. <laughs> They'd be like, Oh god, we've got to eat that <laughs> yeah. rubbish. But it Soz, was yeah. a great cook. Sorry. She, she was she was brilliant though because she was um you know, she, she really took on because in Birmingham there's amazing markets always have been. Yeah. So Birmingham markets are and, awesome. Uh, very multicultural and diverse mm -hmm. and she was brilliant because she used to try to make all sorts of things before you could get ready meal things you yeah know? so she she made her own pizzas and she used to make her own version of sweet and sour chicken amazing and you know so she'd go down and kind of try things out and yeah. soul soup her thing was soul soup so it, anything that was going wrong in your life you know from like heartbreak to losing a job to having a car accident to whatever chicken you, soup. you'd go and see none now, it was anything that she happened to have to hand Oh, okay. And it was always incredible. And, um, and my aunt actually has her recipe and her pot and, and, and cutting board. And she actually keeps trying it out. And she's got really close. But there's just that little, bit of, nan, that little bit of nan magic. So oh. it's, uh, yeah, but nan soul nan soup. Nan magic. So, but yeah, her hostess trolley. Was the best. Was she the hostess with the most? She was. Yeah, she was. And she was one of those people. We've always had like a very open door policy in our house, which comes from them. And um, anyone was welcome at all times. And if you happened to turn up at dinner time, the food would be spread. So like the magic pot, it would just, yeah, yeah, it would just spread to fit, meet the amount of people you'd got. So um, but yeah, so it was uh, she was very um, hospitable um, kind of person. Now, if we come back to the embroidery rather than the food. <laughs> What you can see is... Um, it's more like WI hour though, isn't it? I yeah. Mean, to be honest. <laughs> Basically. It's all so good. So what you can see is if I'm just going to lower that very slightly so I can tip it right up. Oh, look at that. So you can see a really strong line here on the outside edge of the dark green. And then I've speckled some of that dark green out. Nice. And then a line of the light green. And then I've speckled some of that out. So if I just do a little bit more of that. So this is ombreing effect. Yeah, so you're basically just trying to blend that colour across so that you're not creating a stripe. It just so to, it softens the line um, and blends it up a little bit. Now, Helen, I've got a question from Elizabeth. Yeah. Who would like to know what fabric she should use for the saddle cloth on my rocking horse. She said you suggested last time. Uh, uh, its saddle is ripped. Yeah, wool cloth wool cloth so um like a melton for example you could oh, nice. yeah you could use a melton that would be really good um because that's what saddle cloths are normally like the wool cloths what they're made out of anyway um and it, you can embroider it if you wanted to you can edge it um with the ribbon or whether that it's really good and it will last that's the one there you go and um the only thing that i would say is that if you just look because sometimes it's they they um get attacked by moth because uh, moth actually quite like wool cloth so just so, whack a bit of lavender near it yeah so um just be just be aware of um they i mean a moth a moth hole basically looks like a cigarette hole but it doesn't have charring it's it, moths are lazy they sit and eat them eat around themselves i mean that's a bit like me once <laughs> i'm on the sofa if, if you <laughs> i always think I if you have snacks within, within reach <laughs> for, within my arm's reach <laughs> But if you imagine, I always think of it like the reverse of a lazy Susan. So if you think about a moth sitting at an all-you-can-eat uh, lazy Susan table, you know, one of those yeah, where the yeah, yeah. fence turns, it's like that. But basically it sits and eats around they itself. They turn themselves. And then they'll eventually crawl to the next bit and eat. And they have particular colours, particularly with natural dyes. They'll have particular colours that they like. So they really like some of the shades of yellow-green. Really? Um, yeah. Well, I and, guess they're, they're quite earthy. Reds. Yeah, and um, so they obviously taste different, smell different to the moth. And, um, but as I say, it looks like a circle but without the charring in. So if you're seeing that on your wool cloth, then um, moth is what you've got. Oh, so. a naughty moth. Yes. Um, now, lots of people saying they play canasta. What's canasta? Well, canasta's a very old card game, isn't it? Well, yeah, but Diane said that she would play canasta with her mum and her sisters pre-lockdown. Yeah. Lois said that she used to play canasta with her gran every weekend, but when she died, I was 13, she's never played it since. Oh. But she'd she only beat her once. Maybe you need to do a canasta group online. Maybe your, your, your friends on Facebook who do canasta need to connect with each other. And do a canasta. And have a canasta um, congregation. I don't know what you call a group of canasta players. 
will We're think of think the collective that. noun for that. It has to be a scene, doesn't it? A canasta, it's, a canasta collective. Yeah, but, but it it's feels not like it needs right, to be it? more exciting than that. It, it, yeah, it does. Jenny says she has some friends that used to go to a game shop every Sunday to play board games. Um, now I think they borrow them at weekends to play. Oh. See? Yeah. There's a lot um, of it going on. It's there really, is. It's good. Now, see, Susan said her daughter bought her a, a beautiful handmade backgammon set. It's absolutely fab. We have oh. games nights before COVID, cards and Monopoly. Um, oh, and Margaret says the fire screens have a glass cover. The card table one flips over mm. to bays. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Bays is like the green fabric they have on snooker tables. Oh, uh, that's the kind of felt that I was thinking of. Yeah, but yeah. You, can, you can use either side of those card tables because as I say this type of work it responds well to friction amazing but unless said, you're going to get confused between your trump loyal cards and your actual cards well no absolutely <laughs> she says just uh, to say that they are a bit vulnerable to moths <laughs> funny that you should mention that yeah, yeah. and since all the moth killers that worked have been banned that is a problem yeah 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 Oh, um, my son, when he was eight, played golf and was amazing, much better than me. So every time I walked past his ball, I stamped on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you uh, still beat me. Uh, so That's I, hilarious. I can't actually, um, yeah, I, I can't actually hit the golf ball. Freddie's far better than I am. <laughs> far better. Yeah, he's really good, actually. And Claire says that she's like that with her boys. Tripped, no bones sticking out, get up. <laughs> This is it. Oh, the sympathy. The sympathy. Well, I, I don't know. It's one of those things that it, if it's deserving of sympathy, I'd be fully on board to showing sympathy. But if it's one of those things that actually you'd be better off picking yourself up and just get it. Most of the time it's shock, isn't it? Yeah. So Yeah, yeah. Which you just need a, a nice sweet cup of tea and you're good. Uh, Myra says that card table would be so pretty. Hang it up on the wall when not you so you can appreciate the art. Absolutely. So we're just up the ante. You've got to make this art now. Well, it would be art anyway, darling. Well, I know, I know. Um, there you go. Susan's agreeing with me. Lavender, good for the old yeah. moths. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, maybe this is something I can make for Freddie and Dad. See, if we start it soon, I'll design it, and then we can start it up, and then um, this could be a this could be a gift. I don't think my dad watches my shows that much. Um, he's generally got stuff to do. Mm hmm. You know, in his garage. Tinkering. Um, tinkering. He does He does love to tinker. Um, oh, apparently with Canasta you have two packs of cards. Oh. She said, I played Ukra all the time. I don't know what that is. She even played it while she was in labour. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. I just had a lot of drugs <laughs> when I was in labour. Like epidural that just wiped I like the me fact out. that you had to you had to clarify that yeah, no, well you know we've talked about scary mermaid oh. dolls that were stuffed full of cocaine I feel that yeah. I need to justify myself now <laughs> um, a coven of canasta players oh, oh I like that oh. yes I've just finished watching if you like covens I've just finished watching uh, a discovery of witches I thoroughly enjoyed it the books are so much better though well, they always are, but the trouble is I don't get time to mm. read because books. that's the only thing that you can do at that time. Audio oh, books. books. Okay, all right. Oh, they've got the okay. Yeah. Oh, Sammy Ann's um, having to succumb to the Jane Austen fabrics. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, Sally Ann. It's all. It's all right. It's so oh, you're safe here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is your safe space. We are your people. It's absolutely, fun. absolutely. So with this, you can see that I'm filling in. As I say, you can see it doesn't take that long to do it, but you can see you've got a lovely blending now from the light down to the dark. Beautiful. So that is as complex as, as this gets. So basically what you can do as well ooh, ooh. is, um, because you've got two strands in your needle, if you think you're going to worry about getting, this is a good way of doing it, defining one space, defining the other space and working in between. But if you think you're going to worry about kind of being able to blend, um, you could always put one strand of dark and one strand of medium in the needle. Oh, that's um, clever. So that you can tint it that way so you've got less to worry about. Um, so so that's, you've put two strands yeah, through. I've got, Do you get the needle in the kit? Uh, yeah, two needles okay. are in the kit. So, um, so you, yeah, you can... Um, so that, that, will, that will work very comfortably for you. Um, and... What I thought as well, because the whole thing in this is um, tent stitch, as we've been doing, but um, I've put in the kit itself, I've put, if you wanted to, 
the stripes, the two wider stripes could actually be worked in a quicker, larger stitch. So I've put two stitch diagrams in um, just in case you wanted to have a break from the tent stitch and you wanted something that covers quicker um, for the fabric. So what I will do is move those out of the way. So you've, I mean, you've popped them to the side yeah. and sort of stuck them out the side. What's that? Yeah. Basically, always, um, always um, leave your threads on the top. So what I'd normally do is I'd work all the yellow and then I'd work my dark green, then I'd work my, my light green and then I'd yeah. work the mid green. I've just parked mm -hmm. them up out of the way so that I'm not obscuring my own sight of what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to bother me that they're kind of sitting there. But always bring to the, to the top because you'll end up with a nest otherwise. Uh. So um, in the kit, I've dip, given you uh, mosaic stitch and jacquard stitch as Do well. Do you want to show that? Because mm. we're on a yeah. close-up as is. So we yes, could just yes. pop that. So you've got the... Uh, I'll just get that down a second. It's probably easier to... Uh, no. <laughs> Step back. She's <laughs> going back. back there way. we go. So, right. So you've got your kit front and then you've got a good overall picture nice in there so that you can I mean you can see every stitch in there so if you're concerned and wanted to have a look about how I've done it in good close detail you've got your um, context list you've got your stitch your color plan so it tells you what area has what color thread in and the threads all have uh, a number on nice. so you can tell what color they are there's really no confusion about that but then equally, um, if I show you the stitch diagrams, no, going the wrong way, you've got your tent stitch uh, at the top and then you've got mosaic and jacquard. So these two larger ones, they're stitch variations, so you don't have to do them. It's just if you've done your tent stitch in the middle and you get a bit bored, in the two wider stripes, you could mm -hmm. always put the one of these or both of these. So the tent stitch is kind of going at 45 degree angles because, yep. um, because Audra just asked. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see it goes from bottom left to top right um, on the diagram. Um, it's 45 degrees just from one hole to the next hole diagonally. There you go. Um, and um, mosaic is very similar, so it's got the same tiny stitch. It would help if I could actually see. So you can see it's got one of those, but then the next stitch um, from it goes up in hole one and down in hole three. So you've got a, sh a long stitch and a short stitch, okay? Okay. The stitch is very clear, so you can see that. But as I say, you don't have to do those. It's just if you wanted to. And then um, in your um, thing, you can. I've explained that we're using two strands. I've explained that you're how you're starting and stopping. But I have just shown you that anyway. And then you've got these little diagrams that um, are a close up of the particular sections yeah, they, as they develop. Really, there you go. Uh, there you go as they develop so you can see the order that I've done things in but you can see for example I've said use shade 586 to stitch the central vein line on the leaf and the fine stem lines so in each section I've told you exactly what to work what order what color um, and I've said for example thread up shade 103 stitch the two stripes at the side of the design indicated work a row of stitches to the base of the mid layer of the petal in shade 105 give the top an irregular edge this will help to give the sh next shades a blended appearance so i'm reminding you every, every step, step of the way, way. Yeah. what you need to do so okay. stephanie's just had a win she said can't believe it i just went to look to see if i had any tapestry wool and found a bag of appletons hey given to me by my sewing teacher quite a few there years you ago go. you see it's not going to go out of date is it it's not like chocolate where you need to exactly. use it up quickly exactly so um, which is always a bonus this is gorgeous i'm really looking forward to this series Excellent. i'm also looking forward to the card table and yeah. the um hostess trolley cocktails anybody <laughs> cocktails and nibbles little maraschino cherries i mean why not <laughs> why not it's a beautiful thing lovely Sammy yeah he loves those little cocktail gherkin things he loves them he likes oh, them. there's a name for those isn't there what what, are, what somebody in the hive mind is going to know the name of these tiny little party gherkins? I don't know whether we've got we've got it's like um, a little party in your mouth. He loves them. He absolutely loves them. Aww. I just don't know why. Um, Andrew says I'm back. Is this oh, recorded hey. so that I can catch up with the half hour I missed? Uh, yes, it is. You can look at it on uh, Facebook, you can look at it on YouTube, or you can look at it on the website. Um, I think that Coven of Canasta um, like players that. is still my favourite. Morning, loving the show. I'm going to have to succumb to the Jane Austen fabric. Oh, we've done that one. Um, lots of new faces today. You're all welcome. Hello, hello. Hi. Um, lovely to have you here. 
and um yeah yeah well we've also got these other fabrics that you've oh dug yeah, out. yeah yeah so what we could do is um, but i tell you what you yeah. look at the shades of those colors against the shades that you put that you had of the wool definitely and just can you see why it reminded such me such a good match so isn't it you've got your pinks oh hang on should we close up that we can close up we yeah. can close up that so we've got your <laughs> hey. so on target and then you've got your greens it was just as you were showing them i was like hang They're on so that nice. reminds me yeah. of what's They're just arrived match. well i'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do with this summer panel well i'm 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 going to i'm going to take some advice <laughs> so Yay, look at those yeah, i mean it's that's i mean if i had uh, yeah Something for everyone there, isn't there? Yeah. You could really match that up. And if you if I hold the panel next to it. Oh, ho, ho. You see? that's beautiful. And the nice thing is, because if I hold the, um, if I hold the, well, this one's part work. So um, let me get, if I can pop that out of the frame a second. Well, yeah, because I bought in the stripes as well. They're yeah, right next to you. Definitely. But if you look, I mean, Hang on. so nice. Swing around, swing around. So. Oh, yeah, there's that green that's saying, pick me, pick me. Exactly. Pick me. And this is the first lot that's arrived. There is more dew in. Mm. Um, it's a beautiful thing. The spring pan will go really nicely with uh, yes. those as well. Yes, yes. And then if you show the autumn one with the stripes, mm -hmm. oh, oh, the oh, Christmas the one's going to be gorgeous Christmas. too. Oh, look at that. So, those rich, rich colours at the bottom. Okay. Gorgeous. I will bring those fabrics on tomorrow. Mm. Um, and then I will, if you want to pop that with that and show everybody, mm -hmm. yeah. So, oh, hang on. That would You're be a, a better job, way of it? doing it. Oh, no, up a bit, up there a bit. There we go, there, there we go. go. They were goodness. the stripes, weren't they? They I made were hard the work of that, didn't I? <laughs> no, and good. then um, if I just grab that so that you... Oh, I'm shuffling the wrong way. So let me just but fold that, was that what, a second. That was what inspired the stripes. Yeah, so basically your... Um, that might work better on the bigger picture. <laughs> I'm just shuffling around here. Like, Can we swap to the bigger one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just enjoying shuffling. There we go. <laughs> just, I'm just like that. And my face the whole time is going. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so, yeah, but you can see that the stripes on that um, were where, what inspired, uh, they were inspired by these fabrics. And actually, sent me a snap, they do you? go, they go, they go with the Sanderson. Weirdly. Yeah, really. And you, you kind of think that they shouldn't. Yeah, well, the picture that you'd do. sent me. That it was in the same shot, and I was like, "Oh yeah." So it wow, was a really nice. It was a really nice. Um, Could you grab that top bolt that's over by the star? Yes, yes. And just whack it back on top of the stripe, and then we'll show you why we picked the stripe. Because you look at those together. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so I'll go and load those. Marvelous. Hurrah. Right, hurrah, so hurrah. shall I show you a bit of um, a bit of the, one of the larger stitches, just so that people get the gist of oh, yeah, why not? what they could Go do. Um, but then that's um, that's pretty much as complex as it gets. I mean, as I say, if you wanted to go really straightforward, as I've done my panel, um, just pure tent stitch, all the same stitch everywhere, and you're just changing your colour, absolutely great. But as I say, if you do feel that you want to get it done quicker, or if you want to have a bit of change of pace with the texture. Then, yeah, I mean, you, you can do your mosaic stitch or the jacquard stitch, which I've included, or, or any stitch, any of those. We're going to have a look at that then, <coughs> very quickly. Yes, yes. So we'll wow, pop then. that in. So let's just... No, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> well, that's what I was trying to get at. That's so. Corner, corner chins? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm that's not right. sure I've said that right. Yeah. For the little for the little gherkins, yeah, yes, indeed. It feels like something they would have had at the bar at Forty Towers. 
<laughs> Major. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of cheese. Yeah. Maybe it would have made one of those hedgehogs with the Amazing. cheese on sticks. Amazing. Maybe I, I should make one of those for Freddie for his birthday party tonight. You should. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Um, I was obsessed with silver skin onions, pickled onions when I was a kid. I mean, they're another thing that should be in every bar. I mean, I'd literally be eating ev the whole bowl. That's fine. <laughs> That's every, fine. Pa every family party. That's all right. So... I bet. Yeah. Um, Shirley says, I'm new to watching you. Well, hello, welcome. She says, how do hello. I buy from you, please? You go to www.natashamakes.com and um, have a rummage through all of the loveliness that is there. You can either shop by the day. Um, so because today's show's um, fabric will be up. So if you click on where you can watch us live on the website, all of the... Um, all of the things that we've got on the show today will be listed underneath. Just keep on scrolling and there, there'll be a little thing that says show all. Um, so just have a look on that. Always look for the show all, by the way, when you're on the website because it will show up the first sort of three things and then you click on show all. Um, it's a bit like show and tell. <laughs> and it say. shows you the rest of the items. But they are, they're all on there. So welcome, Shirley. You're very, very welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today. And welcome yeah, to the party. Helen's stuff is a bit, a bit amazing. <laughs> so basically with this stitch, um, you're working diagonally as we were before. But if you look at it, um, everyone sees stitches differently and that's absolutely fine. You work through, but... So there's a short one and a long one, a short one, a long one, a short one, a long one to start you off. And then what you could do is you could work diagonally if you wanted. So the short touches the short. So they're just literally like a 10 stitch up in one hole, down another. Oh, OK. Um, and then the long ones also go diagonally. So you know that you're kind of um, up in hole one, down hole three. So OK, that was not how I thought that stitch was made. I had it like a dog tooth in my head. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, as I say, everyone sees each pattern differently. So it's really interesting when you come to counted patterns. Um, as long as you're ending up with the thing that looks like the diagram, it doesn't matter whether you work horizontally across the bars or whether you're working diagonally through it. Um, it's, it's whatever works for you, really. So. Perfect. Oh, there you go, Shirley. Um, Gemma's... Um Put all of the put a little link to all of our textile Tuesday products for you there. Just click on that. Anytime you see a PT, that's Gemma. That she's it's not like physical trainer. Don't worry, <laughs> it's it's her surname. <laughs> I think she wouldn't mind me saying that it doesn't stand for physical trainer. <laughs> but you can see this one builds it builds up really quickly as well. It's it's quicker because you've obviously got a longer stitch in there as well. So so it's just going to change the texture a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So it just changes the texture. It's a bigger stitch, so it just raises it up very slightly. Yeah. And um, and as I say, so you could decide to put it into your two wider stripes. So I wouldn't do the background in it because you want the background. As I say, it's got a longer stitch in it, so it sits slightly higher. Yeah. So what I would tend to do is to do the central panel in the, all the tent stitch. Yeah. You could do the thinner panel, the thinner strips in the tent stitch, and then you could do that and that on either side in so both in mosaic, both in jacquard or one in one and one in the other. Nice. It's up to you. Nice. So it'll give you a bit of a change of pace. And if you're not sure about them, you could always try them out on the side first. You've got so plenty of space, haven't you, actually, on the yeah, side? Yeah, so this is go. fitting into an eight inch frame. So you've got plenty of space to play on the side. You can just unpick it later because if you're intending to make it up into something else anyway, I mean, that's that's just going to be covered up anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So you don't so tend there. to view canvas on anything. You cover up to canvas, so to, up to your stitching. Mm. So. so, yeah. You could. So I've got ideas now. What are you throwing at me now? No, no, I'm just thinking of how we're going to finish this off. Okay. I have ideas. <laughs> be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm not afraid. It's I'm excited. It's an adventure. It's, it's always an adventure. It is. Oh, it so is. Um, um, yeah, including <laughs> your car journey here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your car always has something wrong with it that when it comes here. That car needs to go. It's, it's, yeah. I think it's because I enjoy myself too much when I get here. <laughs> So, no, that, that car needs to go now. Yeah, you I, need something a yeah. bit more reliable. I, I've lost faith in that car now. It's horrible, isn't it? When you have a car, you know, it only needs to do a few times of not starting or something yeah. and you're just like, I don't trust it anymore. No, it was, it was the fact that I'd driven to Scotland at one point and um, 
and there was a problem with the windscreen wiper when I was driving. How did it just like stop on the middle? Of yeah, it did. It was a lot during of hacking rain oh, on the that's motorway. Fun. That'll do and, it. Um, and it, the chap who mended it um, said, "Have you been tinkering with this car?" And I was like, "No, I know nothing about cars." Do I look like an engine tinkerer to you? <laughs> yeah, tinker with a lot of things, but that is not one of them. No. The car, I get in it, it moves. That's it. Um, I trust people to do it. And um, and he was like, yeah, um, how long have you had the car? And I was like, mm, about a year, year and a bit. And he was like, mm, yeah. Have you had a problem with the windscreen wiper before? And I was, I was like, no. And he went, that's surprising because the person who's had it before you or, or maybe the ones before them have done a bit of a Heath Robinson thing with the windscreen wiper. And he showed oh. me, it looked like they constructed their own elbow bit. I was just like, amazing. Wow, that was in my car. They were like, yes. I was like, oh, okay really making me feel happy yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> so yeah you see the only thing that should be handmade in a car potentially going back years ago when cars had aerials <laughs> yeah. would be i had my little fit panda my very first car we fashioned out of a, a coat hanger um we just we just <laughs> a, a waving hand oh i like that so everywhere i went i was waving at everyone with my aerial i like that yeah I, that's the only thing that should be yeah made on the i car. agree with you I, I agree with you on that actually i my first car was a little rover 100 and it was bright purple like violet and it was like uh, iridescent metallic it was quite, a, sta quite a statement yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah did you match your hair to it no i didn't at that point actually it, I, I mean my hair, my hair has been changing since i was 16 it's constantly changing color uh, and everything. In fact, our next door neighbour never used to recognise me, and he known me since ba since I was Amazing. a baby. It's been like a mood ring. It is a little bit. I think it's just a really easy way to quickly change something quite drastically. Um, and it, at the end of the day, it's hair. It's going to grow back. So <laughs> Mine just grows very slowly. It doesn't matter. That's fine. Long or short, you can still do something with it. But Amazing. as I say, it's like it makes me laugh though because colour wise, as I say, it changes a lot. But um, but you know it it. I don't do a lot with my hair, so I think I think that's the, that's why it's, it sits there reasonably happily. I don't I don't I'm not constantly straightening it or yeah. or hair drying it or anything like that. So it can just cope with colour. Plus, there is a lot of it. It used to take two teachers to actually wedge me into a swimming cap at school, <laughs> and then it used to <laughs> work its way up. Until it was just sitting like a dome on the top. <laughs> and then every, every time we'd had swimming at school, I'd come home with a damp head because my hair really holds the water because there's a lot of it. It's, it's really fine, but there's a lot of it. And every time I go to the hairdressers, like it just surprises everybody how, how much there is of it. And, um, and it's, just really, it's just really funny. So as I say, they used to insist you wore uh, this swimming cap and they used to wedge me into it for every class, which was painful. And embarrassing. And the talcum then, powder. Why, why do you think they would well. want talcum powder on the inside of a swimming hat either? I don't, I don't but wanna... it was completely pointless. Because yeah. every time it used to work its way off and it'd be off. And yeah. then we'd have to retrieve it out of the swimming pool. Amazing. So, um, so yeah. So I don't do a lot with it. Just, <laughs> my sister's hair used to be like, well, we, we both had very long hair. Long, like hair long enough to sit on when we were little. Wow. And... Um, like Scottish dads like you to have long hair, you know, it was one of those. And, um, and... <laughs> it's just to keep you warm, it's just yeah, so you don't have to heat the like house. Yeah, it's like another cloak. Yeah. But it was basically, my sister's was a beautiful, fine little plait, and mine was like a bell pull. <laughs> 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 it was like... <laughs> and, um, and my mum actually cut my hair, my dad went away on a, on a work trip, and my mum cut my hair, because there was an outbreak of nits at school. Oh no. And my mum decided to be preemptive. Oh. I haven't got nits. She just decided to cut my hair, and it went from long enough to sit on to that. Oh, oh, that's not just to that though, is it? I was it? Because... like crystal tips. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it had yeah. girth. Yeah. And it was just like, it just did its own thing because it had not obviously ever, never been that short before. When, um, when I was 30, I mean, I've got very fine hair and it's fuzzy and, <laughs> yeah. you know, all yeah. of those things. And we Full moved, of life. Yeah, that's it. We yeah. moved to a little place in Leicester called Market Bosworth, just yes, outside of Market know, yeah. Bosworth. Yeah, yeah, Battle of Bosworth Field, yeah. 1485. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and my mum took me for my preschool haircut. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The hairdresser's name was Mary Shufflebottom and she was wearing a jumpsuit. These things should have been a warning. Oh, she please. basically cut into my very fine, but lot of it, like you, lot of it hair, a mullet. Oh. 
Yep. I was known as Poodle. <laughs> <laughs> it stays with you, doesn't it? Yep. Those scars stay with you. Yeah. yeah. yeah to yeah. this day, my mum still goes, that was a lovely haircut. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> I was not a cry. And when my dad came home, and my dad was not, the most, he was not the most observant <laughs> man of, of things like this. Bless him. Notice. He went, what has happened? <laughs> it's just like, it was like, you know. Don't sugarcoat that then. <laughs> yeah, well, what has happened? And, um, and he was not happy. But yeah, no. And it, it was literally like crystal tips. It was terrible. It was, it, it had got, guts. I mean, it, if it's, if it's this fluffy with this much length, can you imagine? <laughs> so, yeah. But think what you could do with it. You could go on that show where they do like dog, uh, amazing things on dog hair. <laughs> but this is like, as well, do you remember in the 80s when crimping hair? Was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really and my sister was given a pair of hair crimpers amazing. for Christmas one year. And if you didn't have a crimper, then you just used to plait your hair into really tiny plaits to try and get the same effect? <laughs> yeah, well, same. my sister decided to test her crimpers out on me before using it on her. <laughs> I mean, that's fair enough. <laughs> Quality control. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like it came out at more than 45 degrees was she too scared to use them on her own hair after that <laughs> but i think no she used it on hers and it was beautiful on hers it was just there was too there was too much going on <laughs> so, oh yeah. no you see sj and josh they're you know they were they even born in the 80s they weren't with i don't i don't think they were <laughs> I think I don't think they were at all. So oh, you know they yeah. missed out on all this joy. See all this joy indeed. I think it's one of those things as well that you kind Character of. Um, forming. I like your room um, jug. Lovely. Nice jugs. Thanks. Um, <laughs> lovely, lovely jugs. Yes. Uh, it's got a bit of a yeah, a bit of um, a bit of charcoal in there got to a purify stick in there. and a stuff. Stick. You know. <laughs> so very I did nice. just dig it out the garden, by the way. It's not like out the bonfire <laughs> pile. <laughs> The one the dog abandoned on the floor. It's all good. It's meant mm. to be in there. <laughs> Very nice. Um, <laughs> no, it was good. But yeah. Ah, oh, no. I I do think it's funny because it's when um, songs start to be recycled. So you know, there's been a number of songs recently that I've heard from you know when I first started going out clubbing or yeah. started to be yeah, interested yeah. in music, and um, and they've now been used as mixed mixed backgrounds yes. and things, and they're mixing it in, doing things with it, and I'm like. It's not the original, is it? It's not as good as the first one. Nope. You know? Nope, nope. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Absolutely. This is why I hop from radio station to radio station when I'm travelling around. Because, um, A, I hate adverts. But, B, I also um, like to hear, like, a mixture of music. Because I think it's quite bad for you to only listen to the same music. So... It's really good for you to kind of mix it up and keep listening yes. to new things. Yes. Because, you know, at some point, that thing that you're your favourite now was new to you and you engaged with that. That's true. And, That's and true. so if you only stay in the bubble of things that you already yes. know you like, yes. then you're never going to get a new thing that you like. Oh, we introduced so. the children to Phantom of the Opera the other day. How did that go? Really well. Uh, well, I had it up so loud I couldn't hear them complain. It was fine. Uh, <laughs> Josh says that he was born in the time of Pat Sharp's Funhouse. Oh! Didn't he have twins on the show? Did he have blonde, know, did he? Bl long blonde haired twins that I used to so. run around? I kind of don't know where I pulled that one from, but yeah. I sort of, I don't remember it being that fun. It wasn't my favourite show. Maybe we weren't who it was aimed at. I mean, I've actually got a friend who, funnily enough, was only ever allowed to watch things on the BBC because his parents didn't think that the other channels were educational enough. I wasn't allowed to watch um, Grain Chill in case it scared me from going to school. Just say no. <laughs> Just say no to that mermaid. Okay, <laughs> mermaid baby. Send it out. Um, but the thing but the thing that uh, made me laugh was he went on to work for the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, but if we talked about children's programmes or points of reference when you were a kid, if there was anything that linked to anything that wasn't on BBC, he didn't know about it. So he'd be like, okay, let's bring that up so you can see a clip of... Whatever. Whatever it was, yeah. Yeah, because it would just cats. be a complete blank. So you'd know what had been on, you know, you obviously don't Phileas remember. Fog, 80 Days Around the World. <laughs> to do, to do, to do. I remember that. Yeah, good. <gasps> oh, well, there's a throwback. So I remember watching that. Sorry, guys, this has got absolutely no sewing involved whatsoever. It's got We're just completely nice out of control. Yeah. <laughs> 
but while we're here, yeah. I mean, we could we could switch you off, but you know, it's it's COVID. What else are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, just join us for a chat. It's lovely. Um, Messy Jean, join in. <laughs> they are. It's good. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, fun house. <laughs> Um, and I remember watching Phileas Fogg, 80 Days Around the World, the cartoon version. With the lion? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, yeah. At my friend's house. And they were really cool because they had a soda stream. You know what I always wanted? Which what? was a big disappointment when I actually had it, but obviously because I wasn't a child at that point. Yeah. You know one of those things that you could crush the ice and you could put the oh, juice Oh, yeah. In? Like a slushy maker. And, yeah. But you know what I bought Freddie for his birthday today? Soda maker. <laughs> so, so, cool. so excited living the dream through my seven year old son. Come on, that is Be- good. Well he just he just likes um he likes he likes to put fizz in stuff. So I'm, like, I'm not Why buying not? all these plastic bottles. That I mean that shows we'll do that. that shows hope for his future tastes. Absolutely. I like, I like some fizz. Absolutely. <laughs> put Absolutely. the fizz in it. <laughs> yeah, put the fizz in life. I like that. <laughs> Oh, it's all right. Sarah Snaggy Fairbank Williams is enjoying the chat very much. I think she's going to get together with Elizabeth and sort out because she does saddly type things. Ah, I think excellent. she's going to do something with Elizabeth and the, when they can, when it is safe and Marvelous. they are able to do so. I like that. So. They're all connecting. It's I like that. It's the tribe. I, tell I think you. I think the canasta players should try and. Can you play canasta online? Or I have no is idea. It possible? Possibly we'll not. We need to find out a way. Maybe you could. It depends on if they're drawing off a deck. I think it would help if we knew the rules. If, oh, mind you, they've got two packs with canasta. So oh my if you're drawing off the two two decks, problem. Maybe you need to have one person who's holding the decks. And then, <laughs> I don't know. We, I mean, we'll, we, we can work, we can work yeah. something out. Mm. I just know that for Christmas, I bought Freddie one of those games boxes, wooden carved game boxes that's got 45 different games. That's cool. Yeah, we've got as far as Ludo and chess so far. Mm. That's about as far as we've got. Ow! Like cat that. claws. Ouch, <laughs> ouch, ouch. Yeah, you've got my attention. Righty ho, everybody. Anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm now being called on by the cat. Yeah, I went, um, I went to the vet yesterday and the vet looked like me, look at me like I was completely insane because I said I'd got a few questions. So, one being, what was the sex of my cat? How old do you think my cat might be? And, uh, you know, all the things that you're supposed to fill in on the registration form. <laughs> and uh, is it a pedigree or a moggy? I don't know. You tell me. I don't even know whether there's a boy or girl. So um, he's very fluffy underneath. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to poke around. Um, <laughs> doesn't seem right to tinker about down there. Um, so, so one of the things that I said was, you know, we're talking about injections and microchipping and all the rest of it. And, uh, and I said, uh, with dogs, you obviously can you get their claws snipped um, down. Uh, if they're not exercising enough. Um, it, with cats, do I need to do that? And, um, and they said, he, he looked at me like I was completely bonkers. And I was like, I've never had a cat before. Well, I don't you know. can clip their claws or you can just give them a scratching post. Well, I gave them a sh- scratching pad. And, but I was just, I didn't want to, him to end up with, you know, those people out in the world, Guinness Book of Records, where they end up with like, curly yeah I don't, I don't think i, don't <laughs> I, was like, think that's gonna I don't know if that's a thing for cats i don't know <laughs> so i don't know um so i was like just checking and uh, but they it was regret just the those fact... life choices with like touch screen phones <laughs> yeah. but the thing that made me really chuckle was the fact that the vet looked at me like i was nuts and then kind of went oh no that's a serious question okay <laughs> No, their claws just come in behind the other claws. So I, I just thought it was hilarious. So I was just like, okay. It's good to learn so, these things. Yeah. Hello. So, yeah, it did really make me laugh. She's anyway. She's got to go back to the vet. The allergies are rife again. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, Susan, the Juki machine model that is on the desk is a DX7. They are currently out of stock most places. We've got the NX7. They are available. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want... Any advice, just message us and we can help you from there, um, which is, yeah, is what we can do because we have, we always have options, always have options, but um, yeah, alrighty then. <laughs> there might be another machine that we can get hold of that's very, very similar to the DX7. It was just the version that was brought in for Festival of Quilts, so just has it like different feet that come with it um, and a different colour on it, but yeah if you are interested in the machine um susan then info at natashamakes.com and we can help you from there excellent just making friends over here yeah no she's yeah she'll be loving that <laughs> she's uh yeah 
Like I say, she's, the allergies are rife and she's looking look a bit mothy, so it's back to the vet for her, I think. <laughs> fun times, fun times. I do like trying to get mothy. an antihistamine oh. down her neck. It's all good. Right, lovely people. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Um, oh, how do you uh, re-knot the threads that you leave on top? Right, so you don't need to re-knot them. Um, they, if they're there and they're in good condition, you can continue to work with them. Oh, okay. um, and I know I've snipped the needle off, but you can just thread. The eye is big enough to thread through uh, two threads. Oh, perfect. So um, you can use a needle threader with wool as well, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, so, and if you need to finish that thread off, you finish it off in the same way as you started. So you basically pull up your thread within the worked area about an inch away, and when you've worked over that space in between, at some point that can then be get snipped snip. off. Fabulous. So let me move that. Brilliant. Thank you. My Tomorrow pleasure. we are back with that rather stunning quilt behind you on the wall. <gasps> da -da -da. I mean if you love colour, you're gonna nice. love that. I like that it. is Tula Pink fabric in oh, there. Lovely. Jane made it. She's delighted with it. We're all delighted with it. We absolutely heart it very, very much. And that will be on at ten o'clock. Those patterns look like um, oil on water or... Um, yeah, it's... Do you know, uh, like... Did she's called the mineral... Crystals, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's Ooh, that's the nice. thing. Um, so the difference between the DX7 and the NX7, we've just been asked about the Dukey, uh, is a lot of it is in the size. The NX7 is a much bigger machine. It is more expensive, no lying about that, but it's one that you will never grow out of. It does a the lot. This is more compact, still does so many features, um, but there is, yeah, there is, it's nearly, I'm just trying to, it's, yeah. Uh, we'll, message me, we'll talk, we'll talk about all of those. Um, oh, hello, John, he's just popped up. Um, he says, 10 days till I'm there, can't wait. We're very excited about that. I need to talk to you about fabrics as well. So much to do, so much to do. Um, <laughs> sorry about the cat. <laughs> Right, everybody. <laughs> I will see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Helen, thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you all. And we will see you next month. Hooray! Excellent. Hooray! Give everyone a wave. Bye-bye. <laughs>